بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد يوشك الأمم أن تدع عليكم إلى أن قال ولا يقذفن الله في قلوبكم الوهن الله والإنستل وهن in the hearts of the ummah and that وهن will be the cause of the decline and the consumption of the ummah حب الدنيا وكراهية الموت as if نبي عليه الصلاة والسلام is the master surgeon and is identifying the problem and the weakness so all these things are going to happen and they will consume you and they will make you pieces and morsels of flesh and despite your numbers despite your quantities despite, despite your wealth despite your oil reserves you will be a drop in the ocean you will have no value so we need to make effort on this heart we need to make effort on Allah we need to make effort on Sunnah we need to make effort on Deen it is all about ambition it is about priority it is about focus otherwise they are planning and they are plotting we have only got one door and if we lose the key to that master door then there is only destruction and the only people to blame is the person that lost that key so these different departments whether it's a council for national policy council on foreign relations which was established in 1921 and was a combination of members prominent politician judges members of the intelligence community high-ranking officials or whether it's their plotting through the methodology of dirty bombs in an article in August 2015 Forbes noted the Western media has decided to carry the story of a dirty bomb purportedly being assembled by rebel forces and nuclear scientists the Kremlin propaganda had already been peddling its own dirty bomb story for Ukraine. Live leak reported that Ukrainian nationalists were caught trafficking in nuclear materials and radioactive substances with the potential to make a dirty bomb. Also a press article with regards to Israel that one of the CIA contractors was saying in, in uh, Israel is testing nuclear bombs in deserts which could be used as a false flag in the United States to implicate. So part of the confirmation from the CIA is that they know that Israel is actually testing dirty nuclear devices in the desert which strategically has no value, but it can be used as a terrorist device in a false flag attack. So like how 9-11 was needed to justify certain actions, other actions could be justified through a dirty bomb. Likewise, uh, permanent IDs barcoding where uh, individuals would be barcoded and chips would be implanted. And that research has been carried on from the 1950s, 1960s where electrical implants were implanted and tests were done and so much testing were done that they wanted to control the mind behavior. So there were secret experiments and they used live mental patients, elderly, different groups, in different research areas and uh, these implants one was they were pro programmable biochip implants and uh, these implants would number one serve as a purpose for tracking secondly for controlling people and controlling people's mindset and thought process so in the name of identification but it's actually surveillance and uh, brain functions could be monitored through their supercomputer system and uh, these biochips would affect the brain cell 
the brain neurons. So they would have cybernetic bio brain, uh, brain implants and this neuro impulses would now regulate and send signals to the brain, electromagnetic messages to target the nervous systems. Then a person will start hallucinating, they will start seeing things, they will start feeling things. What, what plans? The research has been done, there's a lot of data out there. Mind control and regulating the mind, tests were done, certain drugs, certain processes, certain implementations were done. So a lot of this research has been concluded, it's been done, it's been perfected already. And there's also been data where in certain X-rays they found shops already in people's bodies. So those people don't even know that they've been implanted with these chips. Likewise, the different groups that have been implemented, the Bilderberg group, which uh, had the first meeting in the hotel, the Bilderberg, and uh, initiated in 1954, which includes the Western Europe, America, all the ruling class people, the Atlantis elites. Then you have the Bohemian Club, which was initiated in 1872, where even President Nixon said, anybody can be president of the United States, but very few can ever have hope of becoming a president of the Bohemian Club. And then we see in the US, that's why China suits the agenda fine. In the US, the estimated 70 million firearms were added to the American arsenals just in the last 20 years. And if you look at an overall, there's an estimated 265 million guns owned. And just half of those 133 million were in the hands of 3% of American adults what an average person own in 17 guns. So when you see laws now start being implemented in any country where they say in the name of gun control and humanity, and that's part of the United Nations in the sixth biennial meeting of the states, they considering implementing a program to prevent arms and weapons. This meeting was held in around 2016. So already processes are in place, but any country, the, the last glimmer of hope is when that law comes in, then people need to start getting worried and try to see behind the scenes. Then you've got the European Union 28, European countries, then you got the European Council, then the decision to form an economic and monetary un union. On September 2014, Jose Emmanuel, President of the European Commission, delivered a speech. It was titled, The European Union in the New World Order. The European Union in the New World Order. Then if we look at the NATO, the cause that were connected with the French Revolution, conservative powers of Europe, Austria, France, all these alliances, there was a need to incorporate the military forces. That's where NATO came into place. Another thing of concern is that the control mechanisms are for cities. So they don't want to encourage people to live in the cities. So if you need to have a lockdown, you need to have a curfew in place. It's quite simple. If you need to have chemtrails from the sky, if you need to contaminate water, whatever program is very easy to be implemented when it is people are staying in cities in centralized locations. So government officials from the world will systematically, and this is you need to start getting worried when they discourage people living off the grid, they'll start uh, including and applying laws and fines and penalties for having your own balls, having your own power systems, your own solar systems, your own water systems. 
and going completely off the grid, when laws start coming in, then you need to start getting more vigilant. Likewise, if we look at the police, a way to control the populace is to arm the police and militarize the police. So a New York Times article states that police departments in the US have received tens of thousands of machine guns, nearly 200,000 ammunition magazines, thousands of pieces of camouflage and night vision equipment, hundreds of silencers, armored cars and aircrafts. So the police, ordinary police are moving around with military grade equipment. So officers who are supposed to be fighting crime now have become militarized. And that militarization is part of that control. Then there's a project which was called Project Pine Gap. It's a research facility near Alice Springs, which has managed to have been kept secret. And a lot of research has been done, even EMP, electromagnetic propulsion research has been done. And uh, they've included tests of hypnosis, hypnotic keys implanted in personnel. So in the UK's Daily Mail newspaper, one article describing it says, Pine Gap is the single most important US intelligence facility outside America. According to the Nautilus Institute, it employs 1,000 people. It collects data for US drone signals intelligence and provides early warning on missile launches, as well as providing information on armed forces. It is understood that it controls spy satellites to listen to the world. It has three surveillance systems in place. And Dr. Francois, we had done research on this as written, that is an enormous computer system connected to the US, Krukersdorf, South Africa, Guam, Canberra, Antarctica, US based counterparts, which collects information from countries about just about everything from finance to technology, to everything they need to know about a citizen. Locals have seen enormous amounts of food stocked in these warehouse in multi-level underground city. And he writes that shares put on the market at the same time will cause a stock market crash of such magnitude that all national economies of the West will collapse at the same time. Cash will be worthless. The risks of global confrontation will be high. The purpose of the Pine Gap, other underground bases will become obvious if global confrontation is going to break out. These bases will serve as a place of safety for the politicians, their staff, international financiers. So part of that, there's another project called PRISM Project. And that's a secret surveillance which is undertaken by the NSA. And they show that the NSA was collecting data from tens of millions of people. And uh, they had direct links. They were tapped into the biggest firms, well, from Facebook to Google to Microsoft to Yahoo. And uh, they were eavesdropping, Project Prism, where all your data is no more confidential. Once you go online, you put yourself on the line. You put yourself on the line. Another project which was quite interesting was Project Blue Beam. And uh, it's uh, between the NASA, United Nations, Bilderberg, Trilateral Commission, Vatican, Project Blue Beam is a way to create martial law in an iron-fisted world government. So they've got technology, and especially now with the 5G technology, which will culminate and perfect this Project Blue Beam, is to fake the second coming of Jesus Christ, to fake the coming of Dajjal, 
to fake the coming of Mahdi, to fake the coming of Isa salam. So they will use sophisticated hologram type technology to project images of Isa salam across the globe depending on which country they need to influence which people. So they, if it had to be a, a India for example, they would put the image of Krishna and this image will speak and address the people. So this scenario, this scene, this Antichrist will come will result in worldwide chaos, disorder, anarchy. And uh, one article says it involves a gigantic spatial or three-dimensional optical holograms and sounds, laser projection of multiple holographic images to different parts of the world, each receiving a different image according to predominating regional, national, religious faith. This new God's voice will be speaking in all languages. And one leaked info that has come says, this system has already been tested in remote areas. So they've already done tests and that's part of the agenda as well. When it is needed, it will be activated. At the moment, the 5G technology is being rolled out. So we need to be very cognizant of this as well. Then if we look at just the US military and the make of sites, a Michigan-based outfit called Trijicon, they signed a $650 million contract to provide 800,000 sites to the Marine Corps. But the founder was killed in a plane crash in South Africa in 2003. In those sites, on the sites it's written, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So from the Bible and the end of times, those verses, those quotes are engraved in these sites. Then there's another project called Rex 84 program, which has around 600 camps in the United States. And these camps would be developed globally as well. And it is ready and operational. And each camp can house around 20,000 population. Then we hear a lot of the United Nations 2030 agenda. Let us try to study that transforming our world. On 25th September, the United Nations General Assembly unanimously adopted the resolution transforming our world, the 2030 agenda. It lays out 17 sustainable development goals which aim to mobilize global efforts. This document is nothing less than a global government takeover of every nation across the planet. Then you have to look at the UN troops, 90,000 military troops, 116,000 UN peacekeepers, literally in 17 different operations obsolete. We can go into the history of that. Then water. In a global research report, they say there's a trend that the water barons of Wall Street and the elite multi-billionaires have been recently buying up unprecedented water reserves from the mega banks to powerhouses from Goldman Sachs to JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Group, UBS, Barclays, Blackstone Group, Alliance. They've been consolidating and all the wealthy tycoons of the world have been consolidating all the acres of land with lakes, water rights, water utilities to control the water of the world. So Patil will make the effort. Nabi Ali Salam has told us the sickness. We have got the remedy, we have got the cure, we have got the solution. It is for us to practice on this.
As-sabr is half of iman and the faith and the iman all of them being patient is half of iman May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the patience and the sabr that is needed wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin